All right, before we jump into our exciting session today, I do have a few housekeeping items. As mentioned, this session will be recorded. You'll receive that recording shortly. Along with it, we do have a brief questionnaire. Your feedback is very valuable to us, so we would greatly appreciate it if you could take a couple minutes to complete that for us. Um, please feel free to use the chat feature to ask any questions that may come to mind during the session. At the end here, we do have a dedicated Q&A portion. If you like to come off mute and ask your question, just simply raise your hand, uh, or you can still feel free to use the chat feature and I'll be sure to relay those questions. Um, we also encourage you to continue to check out and register for upcoming career quest sessions as well. Um, and with that, we can go ahead and start with some introductions. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Hong Nguyen, and I am part of the careers and professional development team, specifically in the employer relations team here at WGU, where we get great employers connected to our students and alumni. We are very excited today um, to have Peter join us for our session, um, our very own WGU alum, uh, Peter McDermott, who is the Senior Director at Marriott International. Uh, and today he'll share with us some of his experience and his pathway from frontline to leadership with Marriott International. And with that, Peter, I will go ahead and pass the mic over to you. Awesome, Hung, thanks so much for the opportunity um, to share this time. and. Thanks for all of you that are joining the call. I know your time is valuable and um, hopefully you'll find this time that we have together insightful. Um, so before we dive in, first things first, um, I'm a huge advocate for Western Governors University, uh, three time graduates, love it so much I can't quit, I keep coming back. Um, I am not a recruiter for Marriott International. I do not work in human resources. I just like you am a lifelong learner, um, trying to build a career and, you know, find opportunity for my family to thrive and, and be successful. So what I wanna do today, really my goal is to share with you just a little bit of background in my story, how I got to where I am, how WGU helped me get into the role that I'm in today, and then tell you a lot more about Marriott International, about the travel industry. What I'd really like to focus the time on is answering your questions, um, helping you find the advocates, the sponsors, um, the people in your life and your career that will help you enjoy the same success I have by finding ways to weave in what you've learned or proven through your education um, to finding new opportunities to grow and thrive in your career. So with that, to kind of go on this theme um, from frontline to leadership, uh, I started my career uh, quite a few years ago. I just had my 18th year anniversary with Marriott. Um, I am kind of one of those uh, outliers now that spent my whole career pretty much with the same company. Um, I started with Marriott in 2006. I started as a loss prevention officer at the Renaissance Hotel in Nashville. So if you've ever uh, visited Music City, you might be familiar with a hotel uh, that is connected to what used to be the convention center. Um, it's uh, now a really cool entertainment complex, um, but just had a very humble beginning. I went to a traditional four-year university like many of you may have before. I was studying journalism and electronic media. And I, while I was passionate about that and I really enjoyed it, I was bogged down by some of the general education requirements. Um, this was a time when the newspaper industry was not doing that well. And I just really, I wasn't as inspired or feel as much hope on the career I was pursuing through my education there. It was having a little more time uh, enjoying Knoxville and all the other things that had than perhaps investing in my education as I should have been um, in my late teens, early 20s. So. Um, when I stopped that program and, and moved to Nashville, that's when I fell in love with the hospitality industry. It was really by accident. I never pursued a career in hotels, but as a kid, I always loved to travel. Uh, my dad would take us on his work trips occasionally, and I was always fascinated by hotels. I love to eat. I don't know about you, but that's another great facet of hospitality. So when I got this first job coming into the hotel industry, it was not glamorous. Um, you can see my funny little uniform with the George Bush impersonator next to me. But, um, you know, it was shift work. I was uh, coming in two, three o'clock in the afternoon, sometimes working doubles until seven in the morning. Any of you that work hourly jobs know that it's grueling. You can work 10 days in a row and have no overtime uh, if your weeks are scheduled that way back to back. But it gave me a lot of opportunities to uh, have access and visibility into the other departments that make a hotel work. And one thing that I learned in that first job is you can be anything you want to be in the hospitality industry. And I think there are a few industries like that, right? You wanna be a baker, you wanna be a chef, you wanna be an engineer, you want to 
uh, do maintenance, you want to be in housekeeping, you want to work in design, you want to work in finance, like anything you could possibly do, you can do in the hospitality industry because it takes all of those disciplines, all of those players. Um, some of our hotels have nurses, teams with paramedics. Um, you know, some of our uh, our buildings, such as our headquarters, has early childhood development. I mean, there's literally anything you could imagine you would want to do. You can find a place to do that in a hotel or in the hospitality industry. And being in loss prevention or security, it really connects you to all the other disciplines um, or functional areas in a hotel. Um, getting to hear everybody's story, their background, and, and it's really fascinating and gives you a greater appreciation into all the hard work that goes in whenever you travel uh, in the state somewhere. So um, I enjoyed that role there and climbed as best I could uh, with the limitations of a security department at a 700 room hotel. And then later found myself at the Gaylord Opryland Resort and Convention Center, um, also in Nashville. It was there that I joined on as the show floor manager. Um, and in that role, I was actually selling security and medical services to the conventions that would be coming in and staying in the hotel. And while I had left Marriott to go and work at Gaylord Opryland, it was also around that time that Marriott International announced that they would uh, begin the management of Gaylord Hotels. So it was, I always joke with people, the only time I left Marriott, they missed me so much, they bought the whole company I worked for. Not really true, but that's how I boomeranged back to Marriott. And through that, uh, was moved into a different role as an executive meetings manager. So the executive meetings manager in a hotel or a meeting planner uh, or a meeting uh, uh, manager in a hotel is basically interfacing with a client that's bringing a group, right? So, uh, for example, I'm here at the beautiful JW Marriott Arts District uh, in Dallas, brand new hotel, had a group of uh, four other uh, leaders here with me, and we had a meeting together. So there's an event manager at the property, and their job is to work with us weeks or months in advance to contract the meeting space, to figure out the food and beverage that needs to be set up, and to make all those arrangements in planning for the meeting. Of course, that event manager has dozens upon dozens of events that she's planning maybe a year or two years in advance as soon as those contracts are signed. So that introduced me into the event management world, the banquets world, the group operations world, the front desk world. It introduced me into sales. And that was kind of the bridge where I jumped from working in a hotel to working in 2014 in the above property sales uh, organization. So actually met my wife at Gaylord Opryland, not that you should always meet your spouse at work, but is the biggest employer in Tennessee. I think that one counts is it is a write off. Um, so she and I met there. She had an opportunity to go and work for Deloitte uh, in Dallas. So uh, she moved to Dallas and I worked to find a job. I wanted to stay with Marriott. I wanted to stay in hospitality and I wanted to grow my career. This was a pivotal moment for me because this is when I recognize the glass ceiling. There were so many different roles and so many different opportunities that would require my bachelor's degree. Eventually, I was able to find one that I was able to apply, not having completed that, that degree, came into the sales office as a trainee, quickly became a sales manager, graduated into a specialist role where I was helping onboarding new managers. Keep in mind, I was a bit older than a lot of the people that were working there, so a lot of um, Younger workers coming directly out of college, um, you know, quickly after high school, unlike many of our untraditional approaches, found that I really enjoyed helping them learn, teaching them about hotels, because a lot of these sales managers never had the opportunity to work on property uh, or in a hotel and understand all the intricacies of the departments uh, and all the different parts uh, it takes to make a hotel successful. So I really, really enjoyed that. And I gravitated less towards the actual uh, sales and contracting and, you know, achieving my goals, that was kind of table stakes. What really uh, enticed me or what are the projects that we can go and do? What are the things that we're not doing now that we can go and try out? So this kind of theme through my career was always, what are we not doing today that we could be doing that would make us just a little bit better or make work easier for other people? And if you get to know me a bit more, you'll see how I was able to kind of pull those levers uh, throughout my career. So while working in that sales office, that's when I had the opportunity to uh, meet with our business advisory and consulting services team uh, out of headquarters and help them through my capacity in the sales office uh, with a couple of different projects there. And it was during that time that I realized if I am going to continue my career, if I'm going to move into a headquarters role for a major corporation, I better get my degree and, you know, We've all done the same research. Hopefully that's why we're here on this call. 
we found the opportunity that helped us to most quickly prove everything that we know, upskill on the things that we don't, and do it in a way that makes the most sense around our schedules and our pocketbooks um, with a fully accredited program that you're proud to tell other people about. So that's what I did uh, on my bachelor's degree in marketing with WGU, and I am uh, proud to admit it took me way longer than it needed to. And I hit so many stumbling blocks. You know, I was maybe mismatched with my first mentor. Uh, my wife and I were uh, getting married and expecting a child. There was just so much going on at that time. Uh, it took me longer to do it than I wanted to, but I got it done. And that burst that glass ceiling. And that meant from that point forward, any opportunity that required an undergraduate degree, not that it took me a lot to get there, I then had those doors open for me. So if you're currently studying, you're about to finish your program, you're looking for the encouragement, I know it's it's gonna be a number of years before that undergraduate degree requirement is lifted from every opportunity out there. You're gonna be so much better positioned for whatever it is you're looking to do. So keep going, keep working on it. So with that done, I found myself in a manager uh, role working remotely for our business advisory team. The business advisory team at Marriott it's basically a team of internal consultants. So think of us as the problem solvers, the project managers, uh, when things get a little bit hairy and maybe the head of marketing or the head of sales needs an extra set of people to help them break down a problem into parts that they can uh, you know, easily attack and create an action plan for, that's where we come in is, is helping to restructure and help them solve those problems and create solutions that help them achieve their goals and advance their organization. Um, so through that role, I learned through the mentors of others that had come from external consulting firms. So I got to work with some people from Deloitte, McKinsey, um, and other firms that were external hires into Marriott and really soak up a lot of the knowledge they got from those other firms. So, you know, having that diversity of backgrounds, I think was really pivotal to my success and my continued growth. So uh, through that, moved into a director role, and it was in that um, director role. I can't remember if it was the director role or the manager role that I went and pursued my MBA. Um, so got my MBA with WGU very quickly, um, and anyone that's done the MBA program uh, will realize you are so close to getting your master's in management and leadership that, you know, if you take those six months or that extra year, it's totally worth it. So all three of those degrees through WGU were aided by the tuition reimbursement program um, through headquarters at Marriott. And wherever you're employed uh, or wherever you're looking for a job, Compensation is always something, but if you're looking to continue your education with WGU, always ask that question about tuition reimbursement. It's usually the most underutilized benefit a company has. So very proud to have uh, been able to take advantage of that and excited um, to hopefully go to the commencement uh, coming up here pretty soon uh, in Cincinnati uh, to celebrate that MSML. So that's how I got to where I am uh, today, uh, leading strategic planning for about 6,000 hotels across US and Canada. And, um, you know, it's thanks to this career in hospitality that I've had the opportunity to travel to all of these amazing places. So if you're looking to change it up or work in a different industry, what I love about working in hotels is the opportunity it gives you to travel, the discount you get on hotels when you do decide to travel. And I truly believe when you travel and meet people from other cultures and other parts of the country and other parts of the world, it really reshapes your vision on the world. Um, and helps you to grow to become a better person. So no matter what you're doing, save some money, have a travel fund, go out and travel, and um, I think it'll really help you grow, and it's a great compliment uh, to your education and a great way to celebrate a milestone, um, like one of your graduations. So with that, a little bit of background on me. I uh, want to get into a little bit of background about where I work. So um, Marriott International is, uh, a really cool company with a great story. Just to give you a little bit of background, uh, we have over 8,500 properties. We operate in 138 countries and territories uh, with associates speaking over 85 languages. We are always growing um, and we've had strong expansion in North America. Hopefully you've read the news uh, about our new MGM collection with Marriott Bonvoy. It's a project I've been working on for the last couple of years and supporting, and it's amazing that we're able to extend our portfolio to another 40,000 rooms in the Las Vegas market, as well as MGM's other markets around the US. So with all of this growth, with our announcement of new brands, it's really uh, an exciting time to be in the hotel industry. So uh, Marriott um, has a huge number of brands, right? I just mentioned uh, the MGM collection with Marriott Bonvoy. 
Um, you're probably familiar with some of our iconic brands such as Marriott, Sheraton, um, others that uh, you know you may have stayed at or uh, be familiar with otherwise. But you may not know that we have some unique and edgy brands. Um, the Moxie Hotel, uh, for example, if you haven't stayed at that brand, if you're on Snapchat, I uh, encourage you to check them out and get an idea of the flavor they offer there. It is definitely not uh, the hotel you went to with your mom and dad when you were a kid, that is for sure. On the luxury side, um, which is a, a great opportunity uh, for any hotelier, uh, we're proud to have the Ritz-Carlton and the St. Regis brands, um, as well as Addition, uh, Volgari, and a few others. Uh, so great opportunities to experience luxury. If luxury is a place that you wanna work, there are many, many wonderful career opportunities um, there. So looking at this, right, you think of a company why do we have so many brands? And it's because all of our customers are unique and we want to be able to offer our customers something wherever they are that gives them what they need. So whether they're looking for an exotic honeymoon or they're just a, a young traveler without a lot of resources looking to travel the world, Marriott's trying to deliver to all of our customers wherever they may be in their journey with the things that they want to inspire them to travel. So talking about our leadership, um, we are led by our CEO, Tony Capuano, our chairman of the board, uh, David Marriott, the son of Bill Marriott, um, who famously said, what has become our company's North Star, which is if you take care of the associates, the associates will take care of your guests and the guests are going to come back. And that is embedded in absolutely everything we do here in the company. And I think what's really important about this and where I see a lot of synergy with Marriott and WGU is it's all about you. It's all about the associate. The associate always comes first in everything we do. So, in fact, we just uh, have uh, added an associate experience team. So, as we're designing technology, we have a team of people that's not thinking about just the consumer experience, but think about how the associate is going to experience that technology uh, to make it better for them, much in the way that WGU is making uh, your education experience easier, right? Like the idea that you can get a master's degree from your cell phone crazy if you ask somebody 20 years ago, but investing in things so people working in hotels can use their cell phone to complete common tasks without having to walk behind a desk and get behind a computer just shows you the depth that Marriott goes to take care of its associates um, in those things. So it, Marriott's not new by any means. Um, we go way, way, way back in time to a nine seat root beer stand. Uh, you may have heard this story that started in Washington, DC. Uh, when J.W. Marriott, Willard Marriott, uh, and his wife Alice drove 3,000 miles from Salt Lake City to Washington, D.C., and started a root beer stand um, with uh, nothing but their Model T Ford and $300 in their pocket. So, you know, their determination over the years uh, was proven through everything they did to adapt their business. So, root beer, great thing to serve in the summer. In the winter, not everyone's clamoring in D.C. to huddle in and have a cold glass of sarsaparilla, right? So what did Alice do? She walked down the street to the Mexican embassy and got their recipe for hot tamales. And from that point forward, they started to sell not just root beer, but hot tamales. That evolved into what were known as the hot shops. And then later, the family got into uh, hotels. So for over 90 years, we've been continuously innovating and growing all based off that initial entrepreneurial spirit that we still carry today. So one thing, uh, you know, we talked about how Merit is a very people first, associate driven culture. That's all based around our five pillars, right? The first one being always putting people first. This drives the way we do business and it's what you're going to hear the most about um, whenever you work at Merit or talk to anybody else that works here. Another is pursuing excellence and that's dedication to the customer through service excellence, ensuring that we're always delivering uh, guest needs and anticipating them and delivering before we're even asked. Embracing change, I think uh, that would uh, never be as, uh, as pertinent as it is today, right? I think we're seeing things changing at a pace that's absolutely unbelievable. And um, our culture is always embracing and pursuing change for good, right? Change to improve the associate experience, change to improve the customer experience change to expand our portfolio to meet our customers in new places and to discover new, uh, new customers as well. Acting with integrity is a huge thing and that goes hand in hand with serving our world. Um, one thing that uh, you'll notice is we are consistently um, one of the best employers in the world, one of the most favored employers. Our associate uh, engagement survey scores 
always rank us among the highest in acting with integrity in our corporate ethics. So that's a, a very, very important part. When you're thinking of a purpose-driven organization, merit is one that always welcomes all, is always looking for ways to contribute to the community and making things better whenever they enter a new space. So um, some important milestones about the company that you'll see here, uh, are, you know, our culture of inclusion has been going on uh, for over 20 years. We have a women's leadership development initiative, a supplier diversity program, right? So instead of just, uh, you know, uh, defaulting to wherever the biggest supplier is with the lowest prices, we work uh, very hard to ensure that we're representing a uh, wide range of diverse suppliers and women owned businesses in our procurement um, to help that growth and create diversity. Uh, in the function where I work, we're very proud to have gender uh, parity in our leadership ranks. So, um, you know, seeing that diversity, uh, another big focus of people of color, and we know when there's diversity of thought in a room or a conversation, it always improves the results. So very proud of Merit and the strides that they've taken uh, on diversity. And that's uh, very tangible through the teams that I work on and hopefully your experience when you travel with us. So. Lots of work going underway. I don't want to really bore you with the details uh, of all of the diversity things because there's so much great information on the website. I'm not the expert in this space, but it is a, a huge priority and something that we see every day. Um, that also goes along with our associate resource groups. So um, not only people that may identify with these categories, but also uh, the advocates for and the allies of these groups engage together in what we call our, you may hear them as employee resource groups, ERGs, or we call them our ARGs, or associate resource groups. Um, one of the people on my team is actually one of the co-chairs of our young professionals associate resource groups. So in all of our hotels around the world, young professionals have an opportunity to get together and network. So let's say you're in Des Moines, Iowa, and there aren't a lot of hotels in your area. How can you network with other people that work in your functional, functional area? Say you're a front desk manager, and you're interested in learning about revenue management or finance. Well, through this, we're connecting you with other young professionals throughout the Marriott system. So you can learn from them, hear from speakers, network, um, and you know, build that network that's gonna help you grow your career and have those friends that are gonna last you through your time here. So really proud um, of how those have grown and expanded over the last several years and um, seeing how many creative things they're offering for all of our associates. So B is uh, one of the great monikers we have for our people brand, and it's all about beginning your career with Marriott, belonging and becoming whatever you wish to become. So there is, uh, once you join us and get into some of the learning, and as you're learning about the company prior to an interview, you're gonna see this theme of begin, belong, become, in all the ways that we activate that uh, for our associates throughout their career. And um, this talks a little bit more about being inspired through the opportunities, how you'll be part of this diverse team and global community, which I talked about, and then being able to see your impact on a daily basis and how that is going to ladder up uh, to advance your career and creating impact across the organization. With that, many, many opportunities for learning and growth within the company. I mentioned tuition reimbursement. Um, Whatever it is you want to do, you can do it here. There are tons of tools for uh, professional development. There are thousands of properties and offices that you can work in around the world. We have incredible recognition and rewards programs um, that, you know, we actually, even with a small team I have of two people, every two weeks, me and my peers get together and look across our list of associates and figure out how can we recognize them for the work that they've, they've been done, whether it's awarding them with Marriott Bonvoy points or, sending an email to their skip boss or, you know, sharing in a publication, uh, the results of one of their projects. Mary feels very, very strongly about the importance of feeling recognized and rewarded for the true contributions you're making. And as you upskill and you grow in your career. Another thing I mentioned are the great travel perks and benefits. Um, that long list of locations um, is even longer when we consider all the places that I've been able to travel on my own accord with some of the great both lodging and food discounts that you get here. Talked about tuition reimbursement, um, some great paid leave policies, uh, healthcare plans, and actually some really, really incredible uh, retirement savings plan tools um, that have continued to improve over the years. So the company match, the employees have a purchase plan, uh, which affords you a 15% discount with a look back feature. 
is incredibly competitive to many, many other industries. So really proud of Marriott and watching them step it up there. So those are you know, some of the intrinsic uh, opportunities uh, to reward yourself by working here. Extrinsically, um, our purpose is serving our world and we call this Serve 360 and it's about doing good in every direction. So we do this um, through our volunteer hours, through our responsible operations, right? Like how can we get rid of plastic bottles? The JW Marriott that I'm staying in has a really slick uh, Elkie bottle filler station on each floor. So those super hygienic sleek, like, you know, counts how many bottles are saved, seeing those installed in hotels, no paper, no plastic straws in many of our brands. Um, so big uh, procurement efforts and doing good to the world. Also investing in partnerships um, to develop skills around the world um, and to help uh, with our supply chain. And then all of the uh, work we're doing in creating awareness around human trafficking. Um, Marriott was one of the pioneers in this space, creating a human trafficking uh, training program that is available free of charge to any hospitality company, any convention and visitors, bureau network government, anyone that wants access to our training. Uh, we have created an industry standard and offered it to the world for free. Um, which is just one of the many ways that Marriott advocates uh, for good through policy and training. Um, talked a little bit about innovation. I really want to save some time for Q&A. Um, I'm happy to, to go into some of these other details. But what you're probably most interested in are opportunities. And I mentioned all the different disciplines that you can work at in a hotel. That is supported by some of the other places we have, our customer engagement centers, right? So this is where we're, we're chatting with, we're emailing, we're talking uh, to customers on the phone our information systems, information security, uh, you know, so many other disciplines that support Marriott, our technology, uh, and our, our model of serving our guests. So to learn about those opportunities, we have some university programs. I believe these are uh, typically paired with, um, you know, younger traditional uh, secondary uh, education institutions for the internship programs and the Voyager programs. However, the HQ fellowship internship programs in our direct placement opportunities are probably most applicable to this group. Um, so the hotel internships and the HQ fellowships, I would really encourage you if you're interested to go to MarriottU.com and check out some of those. But if you've already established your career and you're you know, looking for something to continue or advance, uh, careers.marriott.com is gonna give you access to all of our direct placement opportunities. Um, and there's a ton of things there. One thing when you do go to look for opportunities with Marriott um, that's important to share is uh, Marriott is both a franchisor and a management company. So a number of our hotels, uh, we help support by managing those hotels, but the vast majority of our hotels are actually managed by a uh, franchise management company. So companies like Ambridge Hospitality and others. So when you're looking for jobs at Marriott, they may actually be with one of our franchisors and franchisees rather. And those are the folks that are actually going and operating our hotels. So great opportunities, both on the managed side and working for our franchisees, very often uh, transferable and a great network um, between both the franchisees and working for a Marriott uh, managed property. So uh, one thing to know about our process, uh, whenever you're going through, you know, it's pretty typical, you'll go through your application, a virtual interview, um, depending on what role you have, there may be a skills assessment. Um, and then interviews after that. But one thing during our interviews, um, I'm not gonna go over the video, video interview tips if you're at WGU and you uh, need help with a video interview, you're behind, you need to figure that one out. But one of our processes in interviews is called the STAR interview. So this is actually isn't in the deck that the uh, University Relations Department gave me, but I'll, I'll just share with you. Um, this is really helpful wherever you're working on a, a career. But the STAR interview is when you're asked a situational question where you think about uh, an actual event that took place in your career, right? So it's not about a hypothetical, not how would you approach the situation, but how did you approach a situation such as this? So for example, the question may be, tell me about a time when you disagreed with feedback you were given by a leader, what did you do, right? We approach this with a framework and you can think of this anytime you're answering an interview question, but when interviewing with Marriott, your interviewer is probably gonna be listening for this framework and it's STAR, it's S-T-A-R and it's the situation or task. So basically you're kind of reciting what you heard the problem to be or giving an example of when that happened. So um, I was in my annual review with Sarah when she told me that you know my deliverables were late, right? The next thing is the action. So this is what I did, right? So these are all the steps we went through. 
and then R is the results. So um, when Sarah told me that, here's what I did, and because I did that, here's what happened. So always remember whenever you're in an interview, that star framework, if you're struggling to think, how can I concisely articulate an answer to this question that's going to be clear to the interviewer, that star framework is what we'll be listening for when we interview you, and it's also really great um, anywhere else where you're looking to grow your career. So, in lieu of boring you all to death with more uh, prepackaged slides, I just want to yield now to Hung and any uh, questions you may have fielded and uh, turn this into uh, more of a collaborative conversation. So, thanks for listening. Yeah, thank you so much, Peter. That was great information um, and for your great insight. Um, if you have any questions for Peter regarding um, his experience or um, how he leveraged his degree, um, his time at Marriott International, their opportunities, please feel free to either raise your hand or utilize the chat um, and we'll be fielding those questions through uh, to Peter. And don't be shy. I don't bite like <laughs> this video, but. Vincent, it looks like you have your hand up. Oh, let's see. I can go ahead and unmute. You said Vincent. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Vincent, if you want to go ahead and come off mute, you should be able to have that feature available. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yep, you're good to go. Hi, Peter. First of all, I really want to thank you for like all the experiences you've shared and your entire journey with us. It's always really inspiring hearing someone like you that's as successful, especially coming from WGU. And a personal question I have for you is actually, I know you're in a really senior management role and you're always dealing with high intensive like deals and situations. So how do you manage that stress and how do you like balance your personal life with all that stress and high intensive situations that you always have? Thank you. Yeah, Vincent, thank you for sharing your time and, and listening. And um, that is a great question. I think stress is really relative. I don't think being in a senior management position makes the stress any different than like as a loss prevention officer dealing with a disruptive customer that is right in front of you and you know they're in the wrong. Um, I think it's all relative, right? So in either case, you know, wherever you are in your journey, it's certainly not just senior management. Um, it's all about taking care of your whole health. Uh, one thing I like about Marriott is they really do support mental health. We have been destigmatizing mental health. Um, I suffer from general anxiety. I talk to my doctor. I have a therapist. And by knowing and disclosing those things to your team and just being real that, you know, taking care of your mental health is the same thing as getting 30 minutes of rigorous exercise every day, right? Like you need to do that or you're not going to be a healthy person, right? So, uh, one thing I always do is protect time for myself. I realize that my to do list is never ending and that's good for my employment. But that means that I need to prioritize. I need to think about the things that are going to be the most impactful and the most urgent. But also saving time for those things that are important that may not be um, as urgent and making sure that I'm putting those to the forefront. So part of that is. Taking time to block my calendar. So, like, every day. I have on my task list, one of the first things I do in the morning is if you haven't booked time with me by that day, it's too late. I've blocked all my time and that's where I'm gonna focus on all my to-do list. And first thing in the morning is looking through my to-do list. Um, maybe you guys have heard this notion before, it's called eat the frog. And it's if the one thing you have to do for the day is eat a frog, if you keep putting it off, it's all you're going to be thinking about. And if you just eat it first thing in the morning and get it out of the way, you'll be able to move on to all the other things. So my, my five-year-old, like, I don't know if it was at school or he bought a toy, maybe it came with baby Yoda, he had a frog and I just keep it on my desk. And every morning I identify what is the frog and I'm terrible at it, but I try every morning to document what that thing is for the day and just know if I can take care of that one thing and stop bringing it on week after week, that's going to help me de-stress because I'm not procrastinating and seeking, you know, validation through other things. I'm not doom scrolling all day. I got that one hairy thing that, you know, how many times is it that one thing that you just can't get done? It turns out to be an email that took you 15 seconds to write. And it was just your fear of how somebody would respond to it. So I think finding time, Vincent, for yourself, making sure you're making your mental health a priority, and then, you know, being very intentional about how you're spending your time 
and how you're prioritizing not just your time, but your focus. That's great. Thank you for uh, the question, Vincent. Okay, we have a question in the chat here. Um, with so many applications that come in, uh, in your opinion, what makes a top candidate stand out? Great question. I think it's from uh, Uchen. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, one thing that I learned at WGU, whenever I would go to write a paper or complete an assessment was, and hopefully you've heard this too, is go look at the rubric. And I would get the rubric up, and I would get a Word document or a OneNote up, and I would make an outline based on the rubric. And I would use that to guide me in writing. So I'm not staring at a blank page. I've got a framework of how I'm going to go and attack that paper. I've, you know, you've heard you can't eat the elephant you know, all at once. You need to take small bites. It's kind of broken out. Okay, cool. I'm going to write a couple paragraphs about this. I'll need some supporting facts there. My approach to interviewing cover letters and resumes is very, very similar to that. What I will do is I will look at the job description. I'll see if there's somebody I can find that is knowledgeable about what that opportunity is and figure out what are the core competencies, hey, right, um, about that particular job that I want to align my resume, align my cover letter, align the responses in my interview. So I know what they're looking for because they gave me the cheat sheet and that's typically the job description. And by mining out and relating my experience to those particular competencies and demonstrating where I've done those things that I'm looking for, that is an interviewer who's spent a lot of time usually putting together and crafting that job description, especially for newer roles. That's going to be so refreshing and easy for them to, to pick out and make you stand out from other candidates because you're demonstrating and emphasizing exactly what they're looking for. So I would recommend look at the job description, find the core competencies and adjust what your messaging is to meet that. Perfect. That's a great answer. Um, thank you for your question. We have one more here. Uh, what entry level positions are available to someone who's interested in a career at Marriott? Great question. Um, there is any number of positions. Um, you know, it really depends on what you're passionate about. Uh, there are very manual labor jobs um, that I would not discount because they give you access and visibility and exposure to many other parts of the hotel, right? If you're interested in culinary, you can work in the kitchen. Um, you, uh, you know, front desk manager is, you know, obviously a go to kind of more white collar position that you'll find in the hotel. Um, there are often market IT managers uh, where that may be an entry point for you, certainly working in any of our customer engagement centers, um, guest of service associates working in the restaurants. Um, I would just encourage you to visit the career website. Um, and if you search by hourly, you'll find a number of positions um, there that'll be suitable, but it really depends on what you're passionate about. All right, uh, D'Angelo, you have your hand up. If you'd like to ask your question, go ahead. Hi, Peter, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. I know it's very valuable and it's really great to see how WGU has paid you just immense dividends throughout your career in so many ways. Um, I especially appreciate your refreshing candor. Um, for somebody who might be looking to break into the hospitality industry, you know, I think there's definitely the big three, right? World of Hyatt, Marriott, and Hilton. At least that's what I've observed. Um, what would you say besides human capital processes um, would make Marriott stick out and would make an applicant want to apply to Marriott over those other two main competitors in your personal experience? Well, D'Angelo, thank you for the question. Um, thank you for your nonverbal communication throughout this. That's the kind of thing that gets noticed when you're networking virtually. So you're doing that really well. Um, I wanna recognize that. Uh, Hilton, Hyatt and Marriott all have um, incredible, incredible opportunities for their associates. That is the reason that they've grown to the size and scale they are. They offer great growth programs. They're incredibly competitive with each other. Um, I think when you look across those three to decide where you want to work, um, it's just a, really a question of, you know, what is your preference? Do you want to work for the biggest and the best? That would be married in a sense of size and scale. It has the largest number of uh, hotel rooms in the world, has the largest loyalty program, or would you want to work for Hilton, which is you know, chomping at the bit to catch up with Marriott and to beat it and you know, trying to outpace its growth and loyalty. 
And, you know, there's excellence, there's uh, all these different elements you can look at, but I don't think there's one thing across Hyatt, Merritt, or Hilton um, that would push anyone in the other direction. I think you make a decision in your career uh, whether you want to diversify your experience by, you know, going around and spending time with other employers. And I think that has a ton of value. Um, we highly value our, our folks with experience from Hyatt and Hilton because of all the, you know, diverse thought and background they give. And then other people may find once they start a career somewhere, it's a, a great opportunity to, I don't want to say be loyal, but to embed themselves uh, to grow relationships and get really deep in an organization and improve their awareness there. So it's it's really just a choice. I think um, all three of them are terrific options. Um, and as are at many of the other hospitality companies, Ambridge, um, one of the largest franchise management companies is another uh, great company to work for. I work for Marriott. I think it's amazing, uh, but there's nothing wrong with those companies too. Thank you so much. I appreciate your response. Thanks, D'Angelo. Um, all right, we also have Aaron, you have your hand up. You'd like to go ahead and ask your question. Yes, um, thank you so much for taking time out for us. We appreciate it. You mentioned earlier about IT management. That's my bachelor's and that's also what I plan to get a master's in. What would be the best method of approach to reach that career goal within the Marriott? I'd appreciate um, any insight or advice you can give on that. Aaron, thanks so much for your time this afternoon and for the question. Um, you know, information technology, I think it's a broad umbrella. Um, you know, there's so many different facets of it. One that comes to mind that um, ge is geographically prevalent is the IT management of our properties. And typically that's done um, in a market or a regional setting where there might be an IT manager that's shared between a number of hotels, we call them properties um, because some are hotels, some are resorts. Uh, so I would say, Aaron, for you, depending on where you are, um, it's typically a role that requires you to be in person as much as hospitality does, um, is to find hotels where you might be interested in, in commuting to, right? You'll need to be on property at these, these places um, in those local roles and start talking to people, you know, going on the job boards and, you know, seeing what opportunities are out there. But I do believe you'll be well positioned um, with your education from WGU um, to pursue those opportunities. So, you know, looking out for what those opportunities are in your community and where you're interested in working, um, that property model is probably a great place to start. That said, if you live in Bethesda and you're interested in working in the headquarters world, you'll find a number, a number of opportunities there. They probably will require you to be in DC. Okay, I actually have, I used to live in DC, so that's very uh, useful information. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Thanks, Aaron. Um, we have a couple more here in the chat. One from Patrick. What best approach, uh, what is the best approach for someone with a mid senior level experience to take a, uh, to land a role at Marriott? Yeah, Patrick, thanks for that question. Um, I, I think it really, it comes down to aligning your talent and skills and demonstrating your track record and how that aligns um, with available opportunities, right? So in the same way you think about, you know, looking at job descriptions and aligning, you know, your resume, your interview for that, do the opposite, right? Write down what are your inherent skills? What are your strengths? I think so often when we think about self-improvement and growth, we think about what am I not doing well that I need to improve on? That's not going to help you in the job search. What's going to help you in the job search is by thinking about what you do really well. And, and typically we discount that, right? Because it's inherent. It's just part of who you are. So uh, no big deal. Of course, I'm great with computers. Well, not everybody is, right? So whatever those things that you really um, think bring value to an organization, I would do the opposite of preparing for an interview and do an inventory yourself of what those strengths are. And then as you're looking for opportunities, find the opportunities that really align with it. Awesome, thank you, Peter. All right, a couple more here in the chat, one from Faith. Does Marriott have any mentorship-like programs for employees who have goals of expanding their career within the company, or is it mainly through networking? Great question, Faith. Um, there are formal and informal mentorship programs. A lot of those are done at the team level. Um, a lot of those are self-started. Uh, but what I would encourage you to do anywhere where you work is to engage your leader 
um, and help get pairing, right? Your network is limited to the people that you know, and your leaders and others can help you to people that might bring you new insights, might align with areas that you're trying to grow or align with your strengths or areas of interest, right? You may be uh, working in area A, but everyone knows you would be a rock star in area B. Who is a leader in area B that maybe came uh, from a non-traditional path that they can connect you with? So, for example, uh, I have a new mentor. I've been um, working with our leadership team to help identify other people in the organization that can help me grow. Um, the person that I've been assigned is new to Marriott, has a non-traditional background, and I'm really excited that he and I will have the opportunity to you know, share our past experiences. We're actually both uh, reading books that each other has recommended, but to answer your question, yes. Marriott does have mentor programs. Some of them are formal. They're usually at the organizational or the team level. Um, also through the Young Professional ARG, uh, through the Black ARG, through all the ARGs, you'll find opportunities for mentorship there. So opportunities abound. Awesome, thank you, Peter. A couple more. Uh, does Marriott offer opportunities for external candidates to come in at a higher level, or is it mostly through um, internal promotions? Marriott values diversity. So, you know, if we only hire our own and we only promote our own, uh, we'll be limited to the experience and background of our own. And, you know, we're, we're very proud of the training and the capability and the acumen of all of our associates. We certainly do value those external perspectives. So, um, well, a lot of uh, roles may be you know, posted internally, quite often if there's not the perfect candidate internally, those searches will expand externally, or in some cases, um, we may intentionally be looking for outside talent. So it's always a blend. I, I would say for a lot of opportunities, there's an edge um, to reward and create uh, career paths for internal associates um, to have an opportunity for those, um, but many of those open or intentionally uh, post externally. Awesome. Thank you, Peter. We're, we're getting lots of great questions. So thank you everyone for your engagement. We have a, a fun personal question here. Um, name a few of the best Marriott locations to stay at. Ooh, you're going to get me in trouble right here. But <laughs> um, the JW Marriott Los Cabos is absolutely amazing. Uh, some of the property images are used in a lot of our marketing. And when you walk into the hotel, uh, it's like walking into a picture and you just see the ocean and these terraces of of pools going outside. So if you ever find yourself in Los Cabos, the JW Marriott there is um, absolutely amazing. On the complete other end of the spectrum, like the Moxie Hotel in New Orleans is super funky and super cool. Um, so yeah, there's really something for everyone. Um, aspirationally, I would love a cruise on the Ritz Carlton yacht. Can I afford that? Absolutely not, but life goals, right? There you go, there you go. Um, let's see. Does Marriott offer full or partial tuition reimbursement for its employees? Yeah, great question. So as it pertains to benefits, um, they're really specific to your working location, right? So folks working at headquarters, above property locations, on property or for a management company, they're all gonna have a different suite of, of offerings um, for their ancillary benefits. So I would encourage you when you're looking for particular jobs um, to reach out to the recruiter and find out what the terms are um, for that particular role. Awesome, all right. Uh, do you have any tips for someone who would like to become a night auditor at Marriott? Uh, great question. Um, the night auditor is a really interesting and valuable and probably um, a recognized position in hospitality. And one of the great things about that position, for those of you that don't know, is you're part uh, accounting manager, you're part finance manager, you're part operations manager, you're part front desk manager, um, and you're also operating the craziest time machine where the day skips ahead at three instead of midnight. Um, so it's it's a really complex layered job, and it's um, it's neat because the hours are a little bit different. But to answer your question, any tips for somebody that would like to become a night auditor? I think um, your problem solving skills, your acumen for accounting, um, showing your responsibility, right? Because oftentimes you're also responsible for the front desk and other operations of the hotel during that time. Just demonstrating your experience in those three places and articulating why you want that role, how you see that helping uh, to fuel a career path. Um, I think it's really helpful to give you a, a better sense of the business than you would have working at the front desk. So great opportunity, um, focus on those things maybe. Great, thank you, Peter. All right, what book 
or books are you currently reading that maybe you would recommend? Um, just finished reading Hidden Potential by Adam Grant. Uh, highly recommend if you're a student of WGU, that book will absolutely um, speak to you. Another good book uh, that I just finished by Malcolm Gladwell, a little bit older, is Talking to Strangers. Um, so a good one there. Uh, and then I'll leave you with another one, which is called Range. And this is written by, um, I'm trying to remember, David Epstein. I can't remember if he was with ESPN or he was a sports writer, um, but it's why generalists triumph in a specialist world. And basically it talks about, uh, it explores different artists, different athletes, different business people, and basically finds everyone that, you know, fumbled their way through and tried all these different things ends up being much further successful than somebody that identified one thing, carved their niche. Right, as I was talking about my career journey, it was all over the place, right? A lot of lateral moves, checking out different disciplines. Um, David Epstein really speak to that in the book range. So highly recommend range, uh, in potential and talking to strangers. Great recommendations. Um, next question, what's something you learned during your time at WGU that you were able to immediately apply to your job? I mean, the MBA and understanding how businesses work, how shareholders look at it, how to read financial statements, it gives you such an edge, right? People may claim they know how to read a PL, but when you complete your MBA, you know how to read a PL, you know how to read a 10K, you know how to read an 8K. Um, all the things that you see in your retirement planning make so much more sense to you than they did before, and you come with a new depth of understanding. This is one of those things that becomes inherent and you probably tend to undervalue. I just had my leader point out that my business acumen has improved, you know, tenfold and I may not realize I need to slow down when I'm talking about some of these financial concepts because not everyone's at the same level. So I would say, um, you know, the financial aspects, um, business reporting, that type of thing. Awesome. And then another question here. Um, curious if Marriott has an internal cybersecurity division, or does that get contracted out? I, I believe it's hybrid. I do not know the answer to that. Um, I would encourage you to check out uh, the Marriott Careers website. Awesome. All right. Any additional questions for Peter here? I know there's been a ton of great Oh, another one from Vincent. Uh, Vincent, you can go ahead. Hi, Peter. Thanks. Thanks again for everything. Uh, another question I have is, I know you're a really big fan of lifelong learning and formal education, but uh, I, and I know Marriott has a lot of workshops, probably internally being such a big company. But a question I have uh, for me personally is, do you have any resources or any advice on especially building soft skills since all the different degrees have different professional skills? Do you have any advice on helping a young professional like me building soft skills to advance my career? Two, two things. One is a great gift that WGU gives us, and that's LinkedIn learning. I cannot emphasize how valuable some of the content on there is. Um, so please, 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 whatever it is you're trying to level up, like I've never managed a project before. Oh, crap. How do I do that? LinkedIn learning, find a super good series that has high ratings. That content is so sharp and so helpful. It will concisely give you an idea and help you navigate situations. The second thing is to practice. And that is to get involved with your community to, you know, find other ways where you can informally lead um, and practice networking and spending time with each other. I think informal leadership through volunteering um, or other means is a great way to do that. Um, I would just support a WGU uh, through their advocacy program two weeks ago. Is it a Capitol Hill in Nashville? We're advocating for a bill that adds WGU to a list of participating universities uh, to give scholarships to teachers teaching in. Uh, challenged counties in Tennessee. I've never done anything relating to the legislature. I've never done anything for, you know, government advocacy. And I nervously raised my hand and said, okay, I'll go. And just going there and having that experience and, you know, being brave to try something for the first time gave me a lot of appreciation and understanding of that process. And I'd feel more comfortable engaging with those people in the future, whereas I wouldn't have felt comfortable until doing that. So find opportunities that aren't formal and, and stack up, um, that list of experiences. Great question, Vincent. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Vincent. All right. We maybe have a couple minutes for one more question. Anybody else have an additional question? Thank you so much, Peter. This has been 
great information, great discussion. Oh, thanks Wong, so much um, for having me here. I invite you guys to follow or connect with me on LinkedIn, I'm Peter G. McDermott. Um, if I can't answer your question, I'm happy to point you to the right resource um, that can and hope I inspired uh, one or two of you to consider a career in the hospitality industry. Awesome, awesome. Well, just a quick reminder to everyone, this recording will be sent out um, along with the survey. So if you can get that completed for us, we greatly appreciate that as well. Uh, and again, a huge, huge thank, uh, thank you to you, Peter, for your time and your valuable insight you shared today. Um, your experience and passion have really enriched our discussion today, and we truly uh, enjoy such a remarkable presentation. Um, also, thank you to everyone for joining. Great discussion, great engagement today, um, and then wishing everyone else a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks so much. Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Thanks for Thank your time, you. Everyone. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye-bye.